Jamil and Joy podcast. It's been yes, a minute, yes. but we are back. We are back, family. So um, happy right. Thursday to everybody. Happy Thursday. We're almost to Friday, family. So we yes. thank God that mm-hmm. we're here for another day. This is the day the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and, and be glad yeah. in it. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So we, we're back and we're, we're doing a topic tonight called is God still healing marriages? Yes. Okay. We did a last one said, are they trying to destroy marriages? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you a little real quick while we're on this. We felt some resistance. <laughs> there was like some resistance to us uh, doing that in, in the spirit. Yeah. And so one thing about Joy and I, now, if you see us on the outside, you think we're calm, quiet mm-hmm. people. But well, one thing about us is if we feel a fight, <laughs> come on, if we feel a fight coming, especially if it's from the kingdom of darkness, yeah. and we know we're on to something that the Lord wants us to talk about. One thing about us, you can't tell us what we're not going to do. You can't oh, intimidate no. us. So we were like, okay, mm-hmm. Lord must be showing us some some resistance is a sign you're on the right track. Right, right. So right. we wanted to just remix it, mm-hmm. reflip it, right? <laughs> and do it again. We wanted to talk about is God still healing marriages? Why do we want to talk about this one? We you know what? I think we want to talk about this uh for this reason. Mm-hmm. Number one is the good things of God are never broadcast on the news. Mm. You never see like the Asbury revival that happened, mm. the, the, the revivals that have happened through history. Yes. Yes. The revolution, the revelations are not televised, right? right? So that's yeah. one layer of it. The other layer is that there is um, a value that God has on marriage because it's a physical representation yeah. of what all of us come into this earth to do. So let me say this. Right. We're talking about marriage, but y'all don't worship marriage. There's right. people going to church just to find a spouse, just to get a prophetic word mm-hmm. for a career, mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. just to find uh, uh, some kind of leg up for their ministry, right? right? So we're not worshiping this, but these things have value because God has created them. And one of the things that I find today is you can't have too many people talking about marriage in a positive way because so many are struggling uh, mm-hmm. in marriage, right, these days. Mm-hmm. And uh, we wanted to be a voice of those who may be struggling like we were. Yeah. I'm yeah. keeping it. Let's keep it above. Keep there were some seasons it was really rough for us. Yes. And sometimes we both probably in our own times was in our head like, is this all this going to be? Or like, can I can I keep doing this? Right. It gets rough it sometimes. It like a job. It, it, it can become right. like a oh, chore. I want to do a job. Come on. <laughs> it can become like a chore. And, 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 and so turning seeing god's power to heal our marriage and he's yeah. still teaching us i am still learning i said to myself why don't we keep talking about this because there's attack on everything god has ordained everything there's an attack yes. on church membership yes. Yes. there's an attack on people's callings yes. there's an attack on people praying you have it's no an attack on people's voices it's an attack especially the people of god there's an right. attack on the people of god voice because right. you could go to you could go to school and you can have a group for satanists in elementary school <laughs> right for right. buddhists for muslims for yeah. hindus but if you try to do one for the kingdom of god you're going to meet resistance yes yeah your judgmental um, uh, you know all kind of stuff all kind of stuff. Yeah. So we wanted to speak to this because just like God is still restoring blind eyes, mm-hmm. just yeah. like he's still empowering entrepreneurs, just like he's doing those things, there are those out there who don't know if God is still able mm. to heal marriages. Right. But I want you to know, and this is what we're going to get into, he is still doing it. Yes. And that's what we're here to testify to. Yes. All right. So we're going to talk about some strategies and, t- and intent because sometimes you can have all the right intent and you don't got the right strategy. Mm-hmm. Facts. Right? Facts. So we're talking about that in this hour that everything God has ordained, there is a fight for it and you got to fight to maintain it. Absolutely. Yeah. I guess we want to go through what we would have wanted to hear yes. in our first years of marriage, yes. five, 10, 15 years of marriage. Come on. Uh, it, what we would have longed for to hear to hear some other on. voice yeah. say yes because the misconception is oh they're smiling everything's great come on come on now stop believing all them instagram <laughs> and facebook y'all need to stop believing all them instagram and oh. facebook posts right there, there there are preachers behind the pulpit who are struggling right there are people who are showing you some little trips to disney world <laughs> and they married and they can't stand each other yes right and, yes. and i just believe that there's hope for those. Yeah. There's hope for those of us who may be presenting one thing, mm-hmm. but may not be feeling it or living it on the inside. Because yeah. that's a one of the worst suffering is when you're presenting something, but you know deep down you're not living it. Mm. Or when you want something, you want to hear a word, you want some change, but you you don't have access. Right. You feel stuck and stagnant. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's what we're going to talk about. We're not going to be here too long today, but we wanted to just talk about this family because we believe that God is still the same as he was back in the day. He's still restoring everything. Yeah. That's right. And you know what his requirement it is? Mm-hmm. This is a little thing you don't want to say. Like a, a basketball in my hand mm-hmm. is not worth anything. Mm-hmm. But if you put that same hand in, Kevin Durant's hands <laughs> right. is worth multi millions. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, I one of the biggest things that I, I think that we began to really learn is that sometimes when our walk is only in our hands, when our marriage is only in our hands, it's only worth the limited amount of experiences mm. and, and circumstances that we have. But when mm. we humble ourselves, uh, okay. And put it in God's hands, it yes. can it can take on a whole different value. Right. And see, we live in a society, especially in America, nobody want to humble themselves. That's, nobody want to be meek of the earth. That's right. Come everybody want to be a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to admit that they don't know. Right. Yes. You have to sometimes get to say, I don't have the answer, Sway. Yeah, I ain't got them. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. 
you know, and that's yeah. a problem because a lot of times, you know what the biggest problem is? We've been taught to present everything as though um, we're strong mm-hmm. and we can handle it. Yeah. We've been taught that to limp through, to limp through and to lead while bleeding is a badge of honor. Mm-hmm. We've been taught that to move through and, and walk with the pain of our own ignorance and to cover it up and act tough and present that we have it all together, yes. that that is a badge of honor. Right, and that's why the society has so much anxiety yeah. going around. That's mm-hmm. that's a norm now that that's right. people are struggling with that that's anxiety right. and depression and psychological issues because yeah. we're trying to hold it all together, it all together and together. not addressing it with the spirit of God. That's it, that's it. I love that. And, and, I, and I think that what we're talking about is probably it's probably the biggest challenge, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, I think it's Chronicles that says, I'm going to find that, that scripture, and it says it in so many places, uh, but it's Chronicles uh, that says, I think it's Second Chronicles 714. It's such a popular uh, verse. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, yeah. will humble themselves. Yes and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from them. Mm. So humility perks up the ears of God. Humility calls you to get on his radar. Yes. So instead of um, addressing and barking at each other, we need to go to Lord for answers. That's right. Of course you have conversations. That's you right. got to work things out in between a marriage. That says to me, humble yourself before the Lord. Before the Lord, that's and right. And pray to Him so He can give you some answers. That's right. Because a lot of times when you get in relationships, you're just going around in circles, you're saying the same thing, getting the same argument. Over, I know we did it. Oh yeah. I'm like, come on, let's take it there for a minute. And this took about five years. <laughs> come on. What did they say is the definition of insanity? Do they it over the, the yes. definition of insanity is doing the same thing yes. over and over and right. expecting to get a different result. Yes. See, we're, one of the reasons, and we, we've been having these discussions for like over eight years now, mm-hmm. but one of the th- reasons that this is more, and shout out to the man of God, Minister Douglas Burgess. Hi. God bless you, uh, man of God. God bless you. One of the um, catalysts for our conversation mm-hmm. is a period of time in our marriage where we were lone rangers. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, we were lone <laughs> rangers. Yeah. Yeah. And y'all will always hear me say this. Lone Rangers are prone to danger. And and as a counselor of other married couples, That's it's dangerous. one of the most uh, devastating strategies of the enemy. Yes. Isolation. Isolation. Mm-hmm. Because when you're isolated, you know what else? You, what is the side effect of that? You don't have any accountability. Mm. So then you got to start getting stuck in those circles. Yeah. So then you start arguing about the same things, <laughs> right? Right. And then instead of you turning to God, you start saying, it's that woman you gave mm-hmm. me, God. Yes. It's not me. It's her. Mm-hmm. If she would only change her mindset or the woman will say, oh, oh, if only he would change his mindset. <laughs> yes. Been right? down there before. Come on. We were in, we were in yeah. those patterns for a time and there's, there's a there's a there's a certain kind of suffering that marriage provides when you're not in in God's will. That is very pronounced and profound. It is. Yeah, it's very hurtful. Very it's very painful hurtful when you're not. You feel like you're not being hurt, and the other one feels like they're being attacked. That's right. So it, that's that's like coming home to. I don't want to say your enemy. Yes. <laughs> it, it, well, it can feel like that. It though. can feel like that. It can that. feel like that. People don't want to be honest about yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, it can feel like, oh, here we go. I yeah. had a hard day. Now I can't even rest and be myself at That's home right. because we're in this constant cycle of right. arguing. The silence can be, uh, it can be sharp. Yeah. It can be painful. Right. Right. right? Mm-hmm. There, there are two things I want to say that stop people or prevent people or slow people from humbling themselves. Mm. I want to say this as we're talking about humility as the first part. Yeah. We're going to get into some other thing. Two things that really stop people from getting into a place where they can put take the ball out of their hands and put it into God's. Mm. Number one is we limit God by telling him what he can't fix. Mm. 
We say, well, me and my wife, me and my husband have been in this situation so long, nobody can fix it. So I don't even want to give it to God. Right. Because we tell God, whether consciously or unconsciously, we build up this horror story about our situation and we say, well, it's too far gone. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, disclaimer, we are not talking about abuse. No. We're not talking about physical, uh, sexual, uh, those kind emotional, of abuses, yeah. emotional abuses. We're not talking about that. We're talking about this new phenomenon when people feel like they've grown apart, where you just feel like you say we've grown differently. We, we just unsatisfied right. with each other and, and some things have built up. Absolutely. Right. We've grown apart. I'm like, right. well, like, we can say that about each other. I got mm -hmm. married when, just when I was turning 24. That's I'm right. not the same person I was 24. I could easily say, oh, we've grown on. apart because I'm a different person. And Come on. You, we just need to uh, find somebody that's going to fit who we are now. That's so right. That's, you, you got to fight. Have that's some it. fight in you. That's it. You, you know? you, you've got to find, you've got to find that fight. And so one of those things that you got to overcome is the story we tell ourselves and we tell other people and we tell God saying, well, it's too far gone. Right. Right. The, the, the second thing, which is even more deadly or as deadly, but more deadly, stop comparing your marriages. Oh, dangerous. This is just the same as your, your relationship with God. You Dangerous. cannot compare your relationship or no. your walk with God to somebody else's. No. Stop looking at other people and seeing how their relationship is, right? Mm -hmm. And comparing it to yours. Right. That's just like, you know, our generation trying to compare our wealth to our parents. That's right. And no comparison. It's not the same. Like, well, daddy had this house and he had this. <laughs> daddy lived grew up in a different time. It's a different time. <laughs> different time, different, different grind. Time. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> We've got to stop comparing because when we compare ourselves to other people, we neglect living in the zip code that God has for us. Yes. There is no greener grass. There's just other grass. Yes. Other people got to cut their grass just like you cut yours. That's right. Y'all stop. And I'm going to go back to this. Stop paying attention to social media. People look at other couples just like preachers look at other churches. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, man, I wish I had a church that size. I wish I had a music ministry. Or oh, why that couple go on these trips? You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Right. And you don't know what it took to get, to get there. You don't know the story that, yes. that built up to where they are. Right. You don't know. Yeah. So that's one of the enemy's distractions is to cause us to compare. Mm -hmm. That's right? dangerous. It's very dangerous. And, and while we're spending all that time, what we're not doing is going to God for ourselves. Yes. You know? That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I, I'm gonna throw this in and I want you to go to that um <laughs> that article that you have. I want you to go to that that um information that you have. Here's another thing, family, mm -hmm. that I want to say. When I talk to different couples and I talk to them based on what I've gone through myself, stop saying you've done everything <laughs> for your marriage if you haven't fasted. Uh-oh. I know that's another, that's like a curse word. I didn't curse. It's a four-letter <laughs> word, but I didn't curse. Right? Yeah. But whatever you really have a true concern for, you should be willing to 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 sacrifice right because the, the the word fast is rooted in the word humility or that you humiliate yourself when you when you fast you are humiliating your flesh you're humiliating your desire to receive natural things mm -hmm. so that you can tune into God. I'm not saying to fast to get money or to, to, right. to fast. To, some people fast to be like, get my wife that right. <laughs> Don't fast to, for your husband to get right. right. Don't fast for your wife to get right. Fast to get closer to God. Right. Mm -hmm. and so that he can show you whether Right. Mm -hmm. There's something that you can impart or he can impart into your marriage. That's right. Right. That's right. Because sometimes we, we try to kill something God is trying to heal. Yes. And sometimes we try to heal something God is trying to let die. Yes. But uh, oftentimes we need to fast and pray. Because mm -hmm. don't just fast because that's just you being on a diet. <laughs> but when you fast and pray, you're activating your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. 
Right. So I want to say that a part of humility is fasting. Yeah. It's humbling yourself. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I came across and and I just looked up some information about, you know, what are some important things that I agree with with um from a perspective of a woman yeah. dealing with her husband. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the key um you know steps or items that that would apply yeah. and one of the biggest ones that steps <laughs> and I, I maybe I, it um jumped out of me it was because mm -hmm. watch your nonverbal language Ooh. okay mm. come on yes that's a good yeah. one yeah now you can appear to have a sweet tone by yeah. talking. And I had to learn that over years because yeah. you know I, I grew up in a family. It was yeah. very masculine. Yeah. And you just talk and you know <laughs> Yeah you gotta laugh at it. <laughs> y'all said what come to your mind and say that you said what came to our mind, you know, if you didn't like it, that's your problem. You know right. so and I've learned could you agree over the yes, years? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, because there's a time and a space for that. Sometimes right. you need to speak up and be yes. bold, right? Yes, yes, so yes. We don't want to say that, but <laughs> come on, I like that. Yes, it, it's that non-communication yeah. by your body language. Well, you know, when you That's talking, right. oh yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, or your smirk or rolling your eyes and all of this. Come That's on. communicating That's right. to your husband that you don't care nor respect what he's That's saying. Right. They say, to touch on that, they say yeah. only 22% of communication is verbal. Yes. They say like roughly 35% is yes. your tone and 50% or more is your body right. language. Yes. Okay? Yes. So a lot of times, because no one's told us that, we think we're saying the right thing, mm -hmm. but we're not checking our tone or our body language. Yes. And so we don't know that we're coming off sometimes aggressive. Mm. But our, our our words may sound like they may sound like the right words, but our body y'all know how that is. Yeah. When people are ready to do something, right? Yeah. There's a way that people put in their their stance in their body. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a way their eyes start their eyes start moving. Mm -hmm. Right? I see sometimes you'll talk to our daughter. You be like, you need to work on that that oh, facial communication. All the time, I'm like, no, ma'am. Come you, on. You may not be saying that, but you just said something. You just said, come right on. That. See, like, so what we're talking about is we have to be even humble enough to recognize not only our verbal communication. But our tonal communication. I've a lot of men will tell you it's not what you say. It's how you say it's it. It's how you say it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna read this scripture that lines yes. up with this a bit. That's good. This is first Peter um chapter three, verse three through four. All right. So I want y'all to see the wisdom of the scriptures on this. The man of God said there's always that bold one in your family that has that no nonsense attitude. Everybody has one. I got a lot of and some families have a lot of them. <laughs> Some family have a more than one. <laughs> right? You see the reform boy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Glory to God, that's another thing. You got to be able to grow together. Yes. Right? All right. Be willing to keep growing. All right. So here's first Peter chapter three, verse three and four. It says, Do not let your adorning be external. Yeah. The braiding of your hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear. It's mm. so what it's saying is. Don't put everything on your externals. Yes. See, we're in a time now where everyone's presenting their external. Mm -hmm. I think people are more attractive than ever, but we're more messed up than ever. Yes. We're we're beautifully cursed. Mm. People have all kind of different uh, augmentations to their body, oh, their Lord. hair. Men are doing this as well. Y'all yeah. need to know that it's men with extension locks, <laughs> right? Okay, let me get off of that. Uh, so the saying, so don't don't let yeah, everything be about your external, the clothing mm -hmm. you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person, the hidden person. That's your inner man, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. See, bodies fade and money goes up and down. Yeah, but the inner man is what I got to deal with every day. That's right. That's what you got to deal with. That's what those. These are the things that we have to think about. The inner right. man. And so it says, but the adorning be the hidden person of the heart. With the imperishable beauty of of a gentle and quiet spirit, mm. this is this a gentle spirit comes out in your body language, yes. your tones, and your words, mm. right? Yeah, and that's why I want to say this. I want to say this to men and women, 
right? Real quick, women, men, you can have the nicest clothes. Mm -hmm. You can have all the good adornments, nails done, body, figure, six pack, all of that. But if you don't have these things, you won't have what it takes right. to cause a relationship that God ordains to last. Mm, that's okay? right. That's right. Because that gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's right. sight is very precious, yeah. that's what makes the difference between a woman and a wife. Mm, okay. A man and a husband. Okay. It's the character. It's the character. Okay. Gentleness, grace, humility. Yeah. So all of that. All of that. Yeah. Those things matter, and we lose the touch with that because of Instagram right. and, and TikTok. And we see that as being weak now. We see it as being weak. You don't get trampled over. That's right. You're not going to say that because you got humility. That's, That's not right. what it means. That's right. <laughs> that is not what it is. not Come to on. be trampled with. Come on. You know? That's right. Um, so I love that. Go ahead, babe. Well, another one I want to, uh, I guess I'll wrap it all in together. Mm -hmm. um, recognizing each other is not perfect. Yes. Um, and in that, when you're having conversations with your spouse, not looking for ammo on each other when yes. you're being honest and knowing that everything that I do or you do won't yes. be 100 percent perfect. Yes. And we're working to build each other Come up on. to do what we need to do for each That's other right. and in the household. That's right. And I, I, I love that because one of the elements you got to have is grace. Yeah. And let me let me touch on this because yeah. I, I got my cousin on here. Shout out to my cousin, uh, Sine. He said, that's why I fell in love with my husband because of his character. Yes. Come on. That's right. And how many of y'all know that just because even, even when you have character, to go back to what you said, don't mean you're going to be perfect. That's right. Okay. Perfect. When you have character, it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. The man of God said, come on here. You got to have a relationship with God. It's definitely about the character. That's mm -hmm. first and foremost. That's right. If you want to see a healing in your marriage, mm -hmm. and it's one God ordained, right? Yeah. You have to put God first. That's a must. I want to say that. Requirement. That was something I didn't fully understand because mm -hmm. a lot of times what we're operating under is this idea that as people, we're good enough. Mm -hmm. I'm good enough. Well, I got a job. I, I ain't punching it, her in the face. Mm -hmm. I'm not cheating. Right. No, that's your standard. That's right. man's standard. And that, Some people think they got a little bit of money, a little bit of change. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't understand that. You know, there are some things I didn't see because my father wasn't in the house with us all the time. Mm -hmm. So I didn't see a man doing right. what a man should do. And I had to learn to go to God to get those things. That's right. I had to put God first, whether you like that or not, so that I could be in a place with him where I could be pleasing to him. Because if I can't be pleasing to him, yeah. how am I going to be a person you can respect? That's right. And, and you know, that's an uncomfortable space. Yeah. You know, I don't want to make it seem like, oh, you go to God and your partner is going to be on the same team yes, with you in a, right. in a week. Uh, that's right. No, that's right. Sometimes you're breaking a cycle. Come on. Where a lot of times, yeah, when you turn to God for yeah. those answers, and that spouse still over there just being mean and angry, right? Sometimes you got to go by yourself. Come on. And let God come on. Call that other one in. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Draw well, them closer. You uh, say something yeah. real, and that this is a conversation that I'm glad time. we got there. Yeah. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes they don't come along. Sometimes they don't come along. Did y'all hear what That's I just right. said? You have to go to God and put it in his hands, whether yeah. your husband comes along yeah. or whether your wife comes along That's or right. not. It's great if they do come along. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when you face God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. see, there's going to be plenty right. of married people in hell. Mm. There's going to be plenty of preachers in hell. Mm. There's going to be plenty of people call themselves Christians who are going to be in hell because yeah. they did not truly turn their life over and mm. have a real relationship. Oh, Lord. So I, I think we needed to really put that yeah. in. Yeah. Because you, we have to have that relationship with God. And from there, we can begin to navigate these mm -hmm. things because we had to grow in communication. We really did. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I had to learn that. I remember when we were getting married, I mean, in, in a couple of years when we were married, I had to realize I couldn't just deal with you like I did my male roommates. Mm -hmm. Right. When, when I was talking to my roommate, I used, and he say, 
hey, uh, did you get such and such? I would just say, yes, I did. Right. Or you're like, did you go by, you would ask me something and I just like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I didn't realize we communicate different. Mm -hmm. When I ask you something, you don't just say, yeah. You give me a whole drawn out like story. You get, you know, so, so I, <laughs> I would say men and women communicate differently. <laughs> right. Right. So women sometimes need details. Right. Oh, right? yeah. Is yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, sometimes yeah. women need details. Yeah. And sometimes, a lot of times, men, we don't roll like, like that. I know that's right. Because I'm like, if I go out to the store or something, I'm going to tell you a whole summer. Yeah. And I'll be like, well, what? <laughs> oh, I just got the stuff and came back. Well, what store did you go to? What I'll, be like, of- I'll be like, hey, <laughs> did you get did you get that cabbage? You're going to be like, you know what? When I went into the store, <laughs> they had something was going on and some people were shoplifting. And then I went into the store and they had a sale or something. I'd be like, what? I just want to know if you got the cabbage. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> now, 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 I'm gonna tell you something else I had to learn. Do you not know? And some of y'all men, some of y'all men gonna get help with this. I had to learn that you asking me all kind of questions was not disrespect. Mm-mm. See, I, I'm gonna be real. See, I was like, why she asked me all these questions? I just told you, <laughs> yes, no. You like, well, but I know you said yes, but did you do this, that? And I'm like, God, you know, I had to learn. Okay. You you have a different brain than I have. Right, right. Men and right. women Very process things different. Yeah, absolutely. So sometimes we don't recognize that because <laughs> we process different doesn't mean it's an attack. Right. But if we don't really pay attention, it may come off those different absolutely. ways. Absolutely. And then let's be real. Some of them do be doing attacks. Some of them are investigative, like they own CSI or something. Come on. <laughs> that, that, that's very real. Because right. what happens, and let's touch on this for a second, is this. Sometimes we are taught generationally yeah. that disrespecting one another is normal. Mm. Sometimes we have normalized disrespect. Right. Am I right? Yeah. Yes, you know? Yeah. So we have to think about that. Sometimes the things that Uncle Ray Ray <laughs> and them have passed down to us, right, mm-hmm. have not been good. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they, you know, the, the, you know, the scriptures uh, tell us this. It says in Ephesians five and twenty five, it says, "Love your wives." In the Amplified, says, "Seek the highest good for her and surround her with a caring, unselfish love." Mm. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself uh, up for her, gave Himself up for her. Right. right. Here's um. Uh, this is another one. This is in Colossians three and eighteen. It says, "Wives submit." Your, to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. Husbands love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Mm-hmm. See, we don't read that stuff. We sure don't. We don't read that stuff. Sometimes it's been normalized for us to be harsh with our wives, mm-hmm. to not listen, to 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 be disrespectful, yes. to be real short and right. angry and mean. Right. And because we've seen it over and over, we we justify some of that behavior. Absolutely. And don't live according to God's standard. Absolutely, because what we're we're doing to each other, we just classify each other. Oh, that's just her. That's you right. know how women are. Oh, that's just men. You know how men are. That's right. And, and not looking at the person in their heart and their right. communication. That's right. Instead of just putting them in a box of all right. men, all, all women. women. Generalizing. Generalization. Absolutely. That's right. Uh, yeah, you know, absolutely. And I'm I'm gonna say this because this is one thing I see going on, and maybe you can talk about this. Mm-hmm. I see in a lot of cases when you have men and women get men and women get together separately, mm-hmm. we get too comfortable with having these bashing sessions. Yeah. I want to say that's dangerous for married people. Stop rolling with people. I don't roll with men. The Holy Spirit taught me a long time to be careful of men who are always bashing their wives. Right. Because you're choosing to stay with them. Right. But you're trying to project the problem onto them rather than take responsibility. That's right. I never allow myself to get comfortable with men who bash their wives, Mm -hmm. talking down about it. She don't do this. She always do that. I'm like, you know what? Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. I can't partner up with them. No. No, right. no, I don't do the whole fashion generalization. So we got to no. be careful with that because a lot of times that type of conversation becomes normalized. And then when you go back home, the time your wife don't do something you like, now that seed from those conversations is in your mind. That's right. 
that that oh she something is wrong with her. Mm-hmm. Looking at each other funny now. Now you're looking because funny because you, because of what you've been allowing to be seated. Absolutely, in absolutely. Yeah, yeah. One of the last ones I I really really like is um, it. I'll just put it all in three. Mm-hmm. Seek to understand, be trustworthy. Yes, and and always acknowledge each other's strength. Build That's each right. other up with That's our right. communication. That's right. Instead of looking for fault in each Ooh, other. Come on. Come it's so on. easy to, it's, you know, you live so with a person easy. 24-7, you can find yeah. some things, you know? <laughs> what? <laughs> come on. I, I, and I, I'm going I'm to say this scripture and we're going to touch yeah. back into that. It, it says this, above all, loving one another. This is First Peter 4 and 8. It says, above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. See, when you get married, all that stuff from when you were courting and dating that looks so cute, mm-hmm. that stuff washes away. Yes, it now you're waking up with someone with their morning breath. Then the bonnet, the, that is the bonnet, bonnet and all that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The fade to the side. Come on, no. you see in the crust in my eyes. <laughs> now I can't hide right. all my idiosyncrasies, my weaknesses. Yep. Now you see them. Right, right, right. right. So, but at the same time, if both of you are seeking God, right? Or if you're the one seeking God and your partner is it, you have the responsibility of choosing what you feed into because where your uh, where your uh, where your attent where your in- attention goes, mm-hmm. energy flows. Mm. I want to say that where your attention goes, energy flows. Right. So are you focusing on the idiosyncrasies, the stuff you don't like because they're going to be there? Right. We're going to die with those things. Yeah. There are going to be things you don't like about me to the day I die. <laughs> there are going to be things I don't care for about mm-hmm. you to the day I die. But what yeah. are we focusing on? That's right. That's right. right. What, what, what are we focusing on each other's strengths and gifts? Are we encouraging each other? Mm-hmm. Or are we constantly attacking and tearing down? Right. 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 That Come sums on. it up right there. Yeah, so I, I I just really wanted that was a good one. That was a really good one. Where your attention goes, energy flows. Yes, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I, I wanted to um I wanted to read this last one uh, here. Let's see. Okay. Ah, uh, this is the last one I wanted to read, babe. This is one just loop all this in. This is First Corinthians, uh, chapter one, verse eleven. This is Paul speaking uh, to the Corinthians. He said, "Imitate me as I imitate Christ." Wow. I wanted to say that because one of the things is in a marriage. He put a premises in there. He said, "Y'all should follow me." So long as I'm following Christ. Wow. He says, so when you see me following following Christ, you follow me. Mm. But the premise is, if I'm not following Christ, you don't got to follow me. Wow. And I want to say that in marriage, that each one of us, one of the most important things I think we can say is that, um, does God still heal marriages? Yes, if we turn it over to him. Mm. And if he ordained it. That's right. And if both are participating. Yes. If you have experienced a divorce, you are not a failure. God is not through with you. If you're in a rough place in your marriage, don't get too down on yourself. What I did want to read that for, the reason I want to read that is this, is that what God is healing always is those who humble themselves and who chase after him to imitate him, Mm -hmm. who get in the word for themselves who are fasting and praying and saying, Lord, I want to have a relationship with you. Mm. I want to be obedient. And I wanted to say that to say this, that in, 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 even in marriages, that this is the best thing we could do, mm-hmm. right? Men, if you are off, I want to specifically say this to men because the enemy targets men. Mm-hmm. That's why Pharaoh sent them off, sent uh, them off to kill the babies before Moses could come to power. Mm-hmm. Herod sent uh, soldiers off to kill the babies because he didn't want uh, Christ to come to power. It's always about canceling, killing men before they can ever come into knowledge of who they are. Right. I want to say to men, if there's something going on, seek to get your relationship back right, back right with Christ. Mm-hmm. Amen. Find men. Get away from men who don't respect marriage. Mm-hmm. 
Find men who are successful in marriage, who have a relationship with God, and who have been proven through and tried and true in time, so that as you're growing, they can help you grow and they can help you see your blind spots. Okay. Even if your woman, your wife is not a believer, get into that position and watch him work because he revealed to you what you need to know. That's right. You know, I want to say the same thing for women. If your husband's not acting right, he may not even be a believer. That's not always just a guarantee for you to divorce him and, and do all those things. Get into a place of relationship with Christ. Amen. You know, so that's the last one uh, that I wanted to go on. We've got to listen as well. Listen to understand rather than listen to respond. Yep, that's right. You know, God gave us two ears and one mouth so we could do twice the listening <laughs> than we do talking. And that's another one that I think we have to practice. Amen. We really got to practice. Did you have anything else that you wanted to end this off with? Yeah, man? I think you touched on everything. All right, family. So we just wanted to touch on this real quick. Is God still healing marriages? Yes, but only if we turn them over to him. Mm -hmm. I want to say that. I want to say this last thing. Marriage isn't automatic. We, we, we go to school to get jobs. We, we apprentice it with people to get different careers, but oftentimes we won't study. Get into the word if you're having issues. Get into the word if you're doing well, because we're right. still growing. We've got to get into the word so that we can learn about what this thing is and humble ourselves and be teachable. Yes. So we wanted to just talk about this because is he healing marriages? Yes, he's healing marriages. He's healing broken hearts. He's healing businesses. He's healing broken homes. He's healing finances, body, sickness. He's the same God. But sometimes we have to pass the ball, transition the ball from our hand to his hand. We want to uh, thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, this has been another uh, Jamil and Joy uh, podcast. Mm -hmm. We've enjoyed it. Thank you all for uh, y'all comments and interaction. Share this with other uh, married couples. Sometimes it's just good to see another example of people still fighting to do it. That's right. we are sti we're still learning. That's right. We're still growing and we just want to have a conversation and let other couples know we're, that we're out here. We're praying for you. Y'all pray for us. We're going to go ahead and close it out with prayer. All right. Heavenly Father, we bless your name. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, you know who is out there, Lord. You know what everyone who's watching and who will watch, what their issues are, oh God. You know them better than they know them themselves, oh God. We pray, Lord, that you would anoint them, that you would touch them by your spirit from the head to toe. You know what their issues are. Lord, I pray that you would just interrupt their patterns right now, interrupt their day, interrupt their sleep with your presence, oh God. I pray right now for married couples right now, oh God, who may be facing challenges, who may be facing obstacles, who may be facing uh, dark places where they don't have the answers right now. Lord, I pray right now that you would just speak a word into their heart. Speak a word into their mind. Lord, I ask that you would awaken their desire to get back into your word and get back into a place of prayer that they would even fast along with that prayer, oh God, that they would sensitize themselves to your spirit and turn the ball of their marriage, turn the ball of their mind over to you, oh God. We know that you are a restoration God. We know that you are the repairer of the breach, that you are a bridge builder, that you are a reigniter of communication, oh God, that you can resuscitate dead things and bring them back to life, Lord. So for those who are in those positions, who may have lost a sense of hope, oh God, I pray right now that lightning strikes of hope would hit them, that revelation would hit them, that they would have pregnant pauses of awareness of your goodness and remembrance of why you brought them into the relationships they have that have been ordained by you, Lord. So we just pray restoration. We pray blessings and favor on all believers across the planet. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, family. So, hey, good night to you all. God bless everyone. And we'll see y'all on next Thursday. This has been another Jamel and Joy podcast. Bye. Good evening.